Hello, thank you for watching this video. So on this video, I'll be doing question 8, November 2020, Mathematics Paper 1. So this is calculus cubic function. So let's get moving. So I'll read the question 8 uh, statement and then read the questions that follow. The graph of g of x is equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx is a cubic function having a y-intercept of 0, is drawn below. The x-coordinates of the turning point of g are x is equal to minus 1 and x is equal to 2. I will try to read this again. The graph of g of x equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx is a cubic function having a y-intercept of 0, is drawn below. The x coordinates of the turning point of g are x is equal to minus 1 and x is equal to 2. So they are basically telling us what we can see uh, from this graph that they have given us. So they are telling you that g of x here is the equation of this graph. It has the y intercept at 0, as you can see there, y intercept at 0. The x coordinate of the turning point are at x equal to 1, minus 1, which is this, and at x is equal to 2. That's what they're telling you. So the statement is basically telling us this information that I've summarized here. Right? So, let's go to 8.1. 8.1 reads as follows. For which values of x will g increase? They are asking for which values of x is this graph increasing? What does it mean for a graph to be increasing? So if you are looking, uh, so to determine where your graph is increasing, you need uh, to look from the left to the right because your x values are going up, increasing to the right, right? So, um, your graph is increasing where your x values are increasing. Your graph is increasing where your x values are increasing and your y value is increasing. And it's decreasing where your x values are increasing and the y values are decreasing. So you check, you look at the relationship between x values and the y values. So you always increase the y values. No, so you always increase the x values and see how does the y response. So if y responds by increasing, that means your graph is increasing. But if you increase x and your y decreases, then your function is decreasing. So let's look at this. So let's say we start from minus infinity to 1, to minus 1 here. So you are increasing your x values to this direction. But your y value, the corresponding y value, is increasing, is, is decreasing. So I'm starting from the negative infinity side. You increase your x value, right? As you increase your x value by going to the right, you observe your y values are decreasing, right? They are decreasing up until then. So when this happens, you increase your x values and your y value decrease. Then your function is decreasing here. So as a result, your graph, your graph is decreasing here. That's how you're going to conclude. Because on this interval, from minus infinity to minus 1, your graph is decreasing. So, let's move from and on a cubic function, the turning point, you use them as your references because it turns. So when your function turns, it turns from increasing to, de to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing depending on the nature of that graph. So when your function turns, it will change from the increasing from the increasing node to decreasing and vice versa or vice versa so like as i said from minus infinity going to this turning point because you use the turning points as the reference because when the graph turns which means now its nature will will change from the increasingness or decrease will change from increasing to decreasing or from um, Decreasing to increasing. 
That's what happens in the turning point. So you always use the turning points as a reference. Okay. So let's start again. So from minus infinity, you were, you were increasing your x values and your y values were always decreasing. Were always decreasing up until you get to minus y. So this side for x, for x is less than minus 1. Your graph is decreasing. Your graph is decreasing. Or your function is decreasing. Right? And then, we start here to 2. Right? So, I'm going to increase my x value towards 2. So, when I'm increasing my x value towards 2, what does my y do? I'm sorry. I'm increasing my x value towards 2. My y value, my y values are going up. So I'm increasing my x I'm increasing my x value towards two. My y values are increasing as well. So when this happens, when your function is you know, when your x values are increasing and your y value is increasing, then your function is increasing. You can see it's going up here as you are going to that side. So you check from the left to the right. So as you move from left, as you move on your x values, as you move on your x axis from left to right your corresponding y values are also increasing. So when this happens, you said your function is increasing. So your graph is increasing from this point to 2. Between these two, your graph is going up here. It's increasing. So let's check after 2. You increase your x value. Look at the y value as you're increasing the x value. You increase the x value, your, y value, your corresponding y values are going down. So the graph is decreasing here. So that's how you check the increasingness or decreasingness of your function. You look at the x value. So if your x value and y value both go up, your function is increasing. So if your x uh, if your x increasing it means and your y is increasing. Then function increases or is increasing. But if your x is increasing, right, and your y is decreasing, then your function is. So here, you increase your x, your x values and your y was going down the entire time. Here you increase your x value and your y value was going up the entire time. Right? Here you increase your x, value, your x values and your y was decreasing at that time. Because each x value have a corresponding y value. So if you're here, then you're here. If you're here, then you're here. If you're here, then you're here. That's how you look at it. So your function is increasing between minus 1 and 2. So, but at the actual points, it's stationary there. It's not moving. So you don't include these points because when x uh, at, these, at the turning point, your graph is stationary. So you can't say it's increasing or decreasing. It's stationary. So, where is our graph increasing? Let's write that down. So, f is increasing between uh, minus 1 and 2. Strictly. So, it's strictly is increasing strictly between these areas without the including without including the actual excluding the actual uh, points which is one and two which are the turning points so the right way of writing it or the formal way of writing it says increasing when x is greater than one minus one and less than 
2. So this is an interval. Yes, this thing. It's an interval. So this is increasing on this interval here. This interval. Or it's increasing when x is in round bracket, which means if you're saying round bracket, you don't in one is minus one and two are excluded. So minus one, sorry, they are excluded. Minus one and two. So this is the same thing. This is the way of writing this. So when x is greater than minus one and less than two, because these points you must not include them. So to include them, you use or equal to. But you don't, there shouldn't be included here. Here you're going to use a square bracket if you want to exclude the, the end points, which are your turning points in this case. So this graph is increasing in this interval. Then we go to the next question. Eight point two. Write down the x coordinate of the point of inflection of G. Write down the x coordinate of the point of inflection of G. Right? So the point of inflection is where your graph changes concavity. Right? So if you look at, at it here, from here to maybe somewhere here, it's concave up. So it's um, small like this. It's concave. Say it's concave up, right? Because it's looking upwards. I don't know how to say this. So it's concave up, which is its shape. It's facing upwards, right? Maybe after zero somewhere here, if you look at it. It's concave down. It's, it's looking downwards. So that's how we look at concavity. So you can say maybe from wherever that this thing is coming from up until here. You can say, or maybe roughly here, it's around, it's concave up. And then from this, maybe around this point going that side, it's concave down. That's concavity. Is it looking up, is looking down, looking down, looking up. Concave up, concave down. That's what concavity is. So the point of inflection is the point where the graph changes. It's concavity. So since it was concave up here, so somewhere it changes there to concave down. <coughs> that's where your point of inflection, that's what a point of inflection is. How do we get a point of inflection? So on a normal day, if you had this equation, right, you derive this twice, right? You'd get the first derivative, which gives you, which gives you the gradient of your graph at each point. So the first derivative gives you the gradient of a graph at each point. So f g prime, the derivative always gives you the gradient at a point, the first derivative. The second derivative is the one that will give you the point of inflection. It's the one that will give you the point of inflection. So, in this case, um, we don't have our equation. So that deriving this will not help us because we don't have, we are missing uh, the values of A, B, and C. So this will not work, right? But if you were to derive this, let's say you had it. Okay, it's fine. Let me just go to straight to the answer. So now, to find, in this case, when you're given the turning points, it's the, it's the midpoint of these two points here. It will be the midpoint of these two points. So, 8.2, the point of inflection, x coordinate, the point of inflection is equal to x1 plus x2 over 2, which is equal to x1, which is minus 1, plus x2, which is 2, over 2. And then x coordinate point of inflection is equal to this and this, so 1 over 2. This is the x coordinate of the point of inflection. 
Let's go to the next question. Eight point three. For which values of x will g be concave down? So they are asking you, for which values of x is this thing concave down? So we know the point of inflection is 1 over 2, somewhere here. It's 1 over 2. This is our point of inflection here. We are told that we found this 1 over 2. Where is this thing concave up, concave down? That's what the question is asking. For which values of x is this thing concave down? Right? So the concavity is changing at that point. So after this point, it is concave down because at x is equal to 1 over 2, that's where the concavity changes. So beyond this, this is where it is concave down. Uh, this side, this is where it is concave up. So what are the values of x that are this side? They are all greater than 1 over 2. element of 1 over 2 to infinity after this point oh sorry that's why it's concave down after this point it's concave down we can see it even by looking at the graph you can see that the concave will change somewhere here if where we can't really be sure by looking but it should be around this area so it's 1 over 2 so beyond 1 over 2 that's why it's going to be concave down Uh, 8.4 If g prime is equal to minus 6x squared plus 6x plus 12 Determine the equation of g So here in 8.4 You are given that g prime at x is equal to minus 6x squared plus 6x plus 12, right? This is what they told you. So they're saying, if you're given this information, find g of x. What is g of x? Which is the original equation. So you're given what the derivative is, right? Then, you know, this was a cubic function before, right? So this answer here, this 6, if it, this was the highest one with power 3. This 6 was multiplied by what? Was multiplied by 3. The 6 that you have here. You know that this 6 was multiplied by 3. So what you do when you derive, you multiply by the exponent and then minus 1 from the exponent. So what you can do now, you can reverse that. You can add 1 on the exponent, then divide by your exponent. So you'll be undoing what you did when you were deriving. Because the way forward, you'll be like, okay, I'm deriving here. I am deriving polynomials. So what I'm going to do is to take uh, the exponent and multiply, or the power, multiply the coefficient of whatever thingy, and then subtract one. So you do the opposite. So what you're going to do is to say, okay, this here, it was x cubed. So it's going to be x to the power 3, then you leave this 6 here, divide by 3. Plus, this was a squared, this one, you know, because you add your 1 here, then you get your 2. Right? And then you have your x to the power 2, put your 6, then divide by 2. Or, you can be like, okay, this one, one here, uh, it has x to the power 0. Add 1 there, and then you get your x to the power 1, write your 12 here, divide by 1. So you are undoing what you did when you were deriving. Because when you derive, you say you multiply by the power, and then subtract 1 from the power. But now you are going back, you add 1 to the power, and divide by the power. So what do you get? You get that uh, g of x. So here, uh, you can also get to your, what is this, 
can God also get back to your constant, which is your intercept, but you know your intercept is zero because we are, we are given the intercept on the graph. It's zero there. So there's no need to go to it. So what is your g of x? Is minus 2x squared plus 3x squared plus 12x. This is what your g looks like. This is one way of looking at this. So this way, you said, okay, I'm going to undo everything I did when I was deriving. So you know they derived to get to this, right? So you know that this was a power of what? It was a power of 3. And that 3 multiplied the co its coefficient to get this minus 6 here. So you are going to divide by that 3. So you are undoing what you did. And then here we are. So, another way of looking at it, you can say, okay, I'm given G there, G to be this. So you derive this as it is. So G prime and X is equal to uh, 3 times A, so it's 3A, X, then you subtract 1 from the 3, squared, plus 2 times b, so it's 2b x to the power 1, plus c, which is this here. Right? So, what do we have? You say, okay, this is the same as this one here. It's x squared, here is it. x, here is it. And c, here is it. So you can see from this thing. But you see, it's equal to 12, because here is C here, there is C there. Right? And then, you can say, okay, this part here, minus 6, is this part here. So, 3A is equal to minus 6. So, you divide by 3 both sides, which is your A, is equal to minus 2 which is the same as the one that we got here. So, same thing for B, and this 12 is the same as the one that we got here. For B, you say, okay, B is defined by this part. So, 2B is equal to um, this part here, right? Which is equal to 6, which means divide by 2 both sides, divide by 2 both sides, so B is equal to 3, which is the same as the one that we got here. So you can say, okay, my G of X is equal to uh, AX cubed, AX cubed, our A is minus 2, which is minus 2X cubed, plus B, which is 3X squared, plus C, which is 12X, CX x plus cx. So, you can either do the first part where you undo, you reverse your derivative by first adding 1 to the exponent and then dividing, or you can do this part, whichever way that you want, you can approach it. So, we go to 8.5. So, 8.5. Determine the equation of a, determine the equation of the tangent to G that has the maximum gradient. Write down the form in the write down your answer in the form Y is called MX plus C. So they want us to calculate the equation of the tangent to this graph, right? That will have that will have the high, the maximum gradient, right? So, what? Okay. Let's read the question again. Determine the equation of the tangent to G that has the maximum gradient. Write down your answer in the form y is equal to mx plus c. 
So they want you to calculate uh, the, equa uh, the equation of the tangent to this function here, right? That will have the maximum gradient. So how do you get that? So how do we get the gradient of this graph, right? So we know that f g prime at x, which is equal to minus 6x squared plus 6x plus 12, which is the one that we were given, is the, is the one that gives us the gradient. So this is the gradient of g at point x. So for any, po any point on our function, have this gradient given by this. So if you have 1 and you plug 1 here, then the gradient, the answer that you get there is the gradient exactly at 1. So this graph here gives you the gradient at a point, this derivative. So the derivative of a function gives you the gradient at each and every point. So now, if we can plot this, we'll know that we'll be plotting our gradient. So let's try to plot it. So if we plot it here, right, it's negative. This is a parabola that is negative. You know that it's, you know that if you can calculate and find its intercept with this line or on this axis, you will find that these are the intercepts of your, of your gradient. Your gradient intercepts here. Because when you get the turning points of a cubic function, you, you, you it's your first derivative, which is that. And you equate it to zero because the gradient, the gradient at the turning point is zero. That's why you equate it to zero. So, what you do here, you know that the intercepts of these are one and minus, are one, are minus one and two, right? And it's negative, so which means it's concave down. So now, if you plot the rough sketch of this graph, you will find that there's something along the line, something similar to this. So this is G prime. This is your G prime. It's something similar to this. Right? It's something similar to this. So your maximum gradient is somewhere here. Your maximum gradient is somewhere here. So which means it is the turning point of this graph here. It is the turning point of this. This is because I said this gives you a gradient at a point. So I said the gradient at the turning point is zero. So you can see where it is. It's zero there. Turning point at, uh, at the turning point, the gradient at the turning point is zero here. So here it is. So this G prime is the gradient of this graph. So where your graph, where your gradient is positive, which means your graph is increasing. So look at this. We said our graph was increasing here. And look at the gradient, it's positive. We said the graph is decreasing from, the, from uh, after, two, after two going forward. And you can see it's negative. So if your gradient is negative, your graph is, your graph is decreasing. If your gradient is positive, your graph is increasing. So look at this. The gradient is negative because I said that this fun, uh, 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 plot of G prime this is the gradient. So where the gradient is negative, your graph is decreasing. Where your gradient is positive, your graph is increasing. That's what I said. Okay. So now, where is our maximum gradient? Our maximum gradient is somewhere here. Because this is, where, this is the biggest gradient we can find. How do we find it? It is the turning point of this. How do you find the turning point of this? You know how to find it. 
is negative do negative b. The x coordinate is negative b. You can say x coordinate is coordinate b over two a. You'll find it where your your b is this guy. Or you can say it's called uh, tp turning point turning point. Or you can say x one plus x two over two. We show you x one and x two are the intercepts. This and this divided by two. Then you will get your x coordinate to the turning point. Or you can find the second derivative, g prime prime at x, second derivative of this, which is equal to minus 12x plus 6 equated to 0, and then solve for x. All this should give you the same answer, right? So, <clears throat> So, your x coordinate of the turning point of this is the one that will give you the highest. Because you want to find this value here. The x value that will give you the maximum gradient. So, uh, you can do this. Say, okay. Uh, I don't know which one to use. x coordinate turning point is equal to x1 plus x2 over 2, which are the intercepts, which is equal to minus 1 plus 2 over 2, which is equal to 1 over 2. That is the x coordinate of the turning point. The y coordinate of the turning point, y coordinate of the turning point is equal to, we take this 1 over 2 of yours, substitute on the original equation to, to find the corresponding y value, right? So y coordinate is will be equal to uh, minus two x cubed. Oh, sorry, minus two. Original equation, the one that we found, into uh, minus two into one over two cubed uh, plus uh, what was it? Plus six. No, plus 3, 1 over 2, plus 12, 1 over 2. So that's how you're going to find the y coordinate. So we substitute this x value on the original equation, the one that we found, we calculated before. We find that the y coordinates of the turning point is equal to, let me pass this on the calculator. So minus 2 into 0 0.5 squared cubed plus 3 uh, I'll just square it here 0 0.5 squared plus 12 0 0.5 So your answer is 13 over 2 this is your y coordinate of the turning point. So you must find the equation of the line. So you have your coordinates that is 1 over 2 and 13 over 2. Right? So what you don't have now is the gradient. But to find the gradient, at 1 over 2, you only substitute it here because I said this gives you the gradient at any point. So now you substitute 1 over 2 here to find the gradient at 1 over 2. Right? So I'll clean this all. So I said this, the first derivative gives you the gradient at a point. So the first derivative, you're going to say, okay, um, g prime at 1 over 2, this is the gradient at 1 over 2, is equal to minus 6 into 1 over 2 squared plus 6, 1 over 2 plus 12. So you punch this in the calculator. 
What do we have? Minus 6, 0 0.5 squared plus 6, 0 0.5. Prime is 1 over 2 is equal to 27 over 2. This is your gradient now there. So you have the gradient, so you need C. You have a point that you can use to find the value of C. So say Y is equal to mx plus C. So Y is equal to 13 over 2. It's called M. What is our, my M? Is the one, uh, my M is what I just found 27 over 2 into X. What is my X value? It's 1 over 2 plus C. So you solve for C. C is equal to uh, 13 minus this. So it's 13 over 2 minus 27 over 2 times 1 over 2. So it's minus 1 over 4. So what is your equation? It's y is equal to 27 over 2 x minus 1 over 4. This is your equation of the tangent that has the maximum gradient. I hope we are good and done. Thank you for watching.